Welcome to our service. Thank you to Jenny for the reflections, to Jackie for the readings, and to Malcolm and Tom for the music. Our service next Sunday will again be on the church websites and our YouTube channel. And for that service, if you've been sowing any seeds this year, we would like you to send a photograph of what's grown to myself, John or Aniko for use in the service next Sunday. Thank you to everyone who donated to the East Lothian Food Bank. Between the two parishes, we collected nearly 200 kilograms of food and there were also several financial donations. The Food Bank was most grateful for these donations. We are delighted that we're now able to reopen our churches in a limited way for private prayer and reflection. Yester Church will be open on Mondays and Salton and Humby churches will be open on Thursdays, all from 8am to 8pm. If you would like to use Bolton Church, please contact us about that. Please also read the notices in the churches about the rules that have to be in place at this time. And many thanks to all the helpers who are making this possible. We're going to be having a digital coffee morning again this Friday, 10th July at 10 a.m. If you would like to join in, please contact Aniko for the link and note that it is possible to join in via a landline phone. And finally, as usual, if you would like any practical help and support or would just appreciate a chat, please contact Aniko or one of the elders. Thank you. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Let us worship God. Our first hymn this morning is hymn number 134, Bring Many Names.
welcoming God, you call us to you. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And so we come before you again today into your presence, creating a space and a time to pray, to reflect, to connect with you again. Some of us are indeed feeling quite weary and burdened. Some of us are feeling restless, some worried or anxious. Some of us come with hope and excitement, some with gratefulness, and some of us are feeling a whole mix of emotions. It is a strange time and we are all trying to cope with it as best as we can. The situation keeps changing, guidelines keep changing, and we are all trying to make the best decisions for us and to be guided by you in how we go forward, how we relate to ourselves, to others and to the world. Come to me and I will give you rest. That is your promise to us. And so we come with all that burdens us, all that worries us, all our regrets, all our fears, Trusting that you hear us, that you are with us, that you care for us and will help us to find new strength, new hope, new courage. As we now pray together in the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen we will now hear a short reflection from jenny and then our readings today read by Jackie in Gifford. Good morning. One advantage of the online services is that the props for the short address don't need to come into church in a carrier bag. So here I am this morning sitting in the boys gym on the weight bench and you may well wonder why. One of our readings today is from Matthew, Matthew chapter 11. Come to me, all of you who are carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. For the yoke I give you is easy, and the load is light. The other day, one of my boys asked me if I would help him with a very practical burden. This weight here. He asked me if I would spot for him. I had absolutely no idea what this meant. Apparently, it means that he will lift a weight heavier than he would usually manage, the spotter will stand behind the bar and if he gets into any difficulty will swoop in and take a little bit of the weight so that he can complete the move safely. So sure enough, he lifted the weight once, he lifted the weight twice and on the third attempt his arms started to judder and I barely got my fingers under the bar when he lifted the weight clean, completed the lift and put the weight back on the rack. And my vision of him being trapped between bar and bench and me not knowing what to do began to evaporate and a realisation that I had done absolutely nothing except for just being there dawned on me. His burden was heavy, but with a tiny bit of reassurance, he managed what he had considered to be beyond his ability. So if God makes our burdens light, what then can we achieve? We often talk of becoming unburdened, having the weight taken off our shoulders, feeling lighter. Often when we talk something through with a trusted friend or a confidant, the opportunity to talk, to share, be honest about what really challenges us and our true feelings can be a rare gift to be truly met in a moment. And who amongst us doesn't have burdens? 
things that cause us anxiety or confusion from time to time. Change and all the uncertainty that that brings. How hard is it for us to sit with the not knowing? In this passage, Jesus offers us an invitation. Learn from me. Because I am gentle and humble in spirit, you will find rest. An invitation to relationship to be truly met. An invitation for a dialogue with God. Knowing that God will ease our burdens and bring us rest is the greatest comfort of all. Always available, always trustworthy, always has your back. What a reassurance, what an encouragement. And in this time of slowing down, reflect, reflecting, re-evaluating our priorities and our assumptions, many of us have been fortunate to have been able to ease the burdens of others, albeit in small practical ways or gestures of support or affirmation. And many of us too have been in receipt of kindness and generosity, which keeps us connected and assured of the compassion around us. If we think what we can do individually, imagine what we can do collectively as a unified church community. What great feats could be achieved in the name of God and the service of others. So just as my presence was enough here for my son to have the confidence to lift this weight, this promise from God, this assurance to ease our burdens and lighten our yoke, can help us achieve miraculous things. What a comfort, what a gift. We just need to accept the invitation. The Old Testament reading comes from Genesis chapter 24, the marriage of Isaac and Rebekah. First of all, reading verses 34 to 38, then 42 to 49 and 58 to 67. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear saying, you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink. And who will say to me, drink and I will draw from your, for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking, in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink and I will also water your camels. So I drank and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me so, so that I may return either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebecca and said to her, will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebecca and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebecca and her maids rose up, mounted the camels and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebecca and went his way. Now Isaac had come home from Bertholoa and was settled in Najib. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field and looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebecca looked up and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah and she became his wife and he loved her. So Isaac was com comforted after his mother's death. 
The New Testament reading is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 to 19 and 25 to 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to in infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May God bless these readings of his holy word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Slowly, slowly we are moving forward out of lockdown. In addition to the essential shops that have kept us going all through this time, the first additional shops are reopening, and our local cafes are back, at least for takeaway food. For many parents, a new phase has started as well. No more homeschooling, as the holidays have now started. And while most children have not been able to go to school even before the holidays, this will bring a change to our daily patterns. Many parents of younger children will also be grateful that playgrounds can now be visited again too. I know that someone in this house has been waiting to go to the swings for a long, long time. As you heard earlier, we are very happy that we can reopen the church buildings too. It will be in a limited way, yes. But we are glad that after all this time, we can offer a sanctuary space in our beautiful buildings once again. Although, of course, we are so lucky here that there are so many beautiful outdoor places too, in which we can also find God. And yet, things are different to what we knew before lockdown. We need to keep our distance. We need to maintain good hygiene. Many of us choose to wear masks and gloves when we are out shopping or in other busy places to keep ourselves and others as safe as possible. Many of us are also not venturing out yet and continue to shield and stay safe at home. It is a new situation for many of us, something that we are not used to. Many of us have not seen friends and family for months now. Some of us have lost loved ones without a chance to say our farewell in person. It is a very new, unusual situation for us all. And we are all trying to make the best of it, each in our own way. How we are responding, what we decide is the best way for us, will be different for us all. Some will continue to stay at home for a while. Others might feel safe to go to the shops or for a round of golf or to pick up a coffee and some lovely baking from the cafes we have missed for so long. It's important to remember that while we all have faced the same situation, we all have individual circumstances in terms of our own health and that of our families, in terms of the experiences that we have had and the things we are dealing with that are unrelated to COVID. We might therefore make different decisions as to how we move forward. And what's wrong with that, as long as we are keeping ourselves and others safe? Often, 
We look for a validation of our own decisions in seeing if others do the same. And that was the same in the days of Jesus, as we heard in our Gospel reading. But as he says there, we all need to go our own way. We do all come with different experiences and different insights. And that is surely good, because we can learn from each other. Even if our choices are different, we are all united in the love of God, who guides and guards all of us. As we heard earlier in Jenny's reflection, Jesus reassures his listeners that they can trust in God, who offers care, who offers hope and peace. It can be scary to step out into the unknown. Knowing that God goes with us can offer us reassurance, can encourage us on our way. Look at Rebecca in our reading from Genesis. She agrees to a life that someone offers her without knowing very much at all about the people involved, simply trusting that God will be with her, that all will be well. Rebecca meets Abraham's servant at the well, who has come to find a bride for Isaac, the son of Abraham and Sarah, from Abraham's own people. The servant puts his trust in God to lead him to the right woman. And so it is that he meets Rebecca, who turns out to be a distant relative of Abraham's and who offers him a welcome and hospitality. Rebecca agrees to become Isaac's wife, to move to an unknown place without ever having set eyes on either, trusting in the servant's words and in God. Isaac also hadn't come himself, but agreed to his father's plan and put his trust in his servant to show enough judgment and wisdom in finding the right woman. It's quite some weight and responsibility on this servant's shoulders, isn't there? I mean, it could all have gone horribly wrong, but everything works out as they had hoped. They all took a step into the unknown, putting their trust in God, trusting that in the end, all would be well. Perhaps this story can serve us as inspiration too, and as, in, as a reassurance as we take the next steps into this new situation, as we trust God to walk with us into what lies before us. Amen. We now sing again hymn number 540, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say.
let us pray. Caring God, we thank you for all that you give us and dedicate ourselves again to trust you and to live in your love and by your example. We offer you ourselves and what we can bring, our time, our skills, our resources, that they may contribute to your love becoming stronger in the world day by day. Loving God, we thank you for your care, for the comfort and rest that you promise us. No matter how turbulent our lives can be, how busy, how exhausting, how painful, we know we can come to you and find comfort and rest in you. Caring God, we thank you for the companions you give us the people who are by our side, who listen to us, who encourage us, who support us, who are there for us in the good times and in the difficult ones. We thank you for all that we can learn from each other, for all the different gifts that we bring. Loving God, we thank you for the beautiful world you give us, and this beautiful part of it that is our home. For the beauty and life, for the nourishment and inspiration we gain from it, we thank you. Caring God, we pray for this world and for all who are weary and burdened, for all who are ill and in pain, for all who are living with life-limiting conditions, for all who are grieving for loved ones. We pray for all who have been or are still isolated from their family and friends, for all who feel a bit left out. We pray for all who are adjusting to changing conditions, all who have to make difficult decisions and in stepping into the unknown. We pray for the people here and across the world who are living in fear, whose health and life are endangered through violence, through poverty, through injustice, through war. We pray for all who are still working so hard, who are still caring, all who are helping others in so many different ways. Help us, God, to see each other to appreciate and value each other. In all our differences, we are united in your love. You, God, are the beginning and the end. You are there with us through all changes, all new beginnings. Your example is before us and your presence surrounds us so that we may put our trust in you. Amen. And we close our service today by singing hymn number 519, Love Divine, or Love's Excelling.
May this time of worship strengthen us for the week ahead. May we go forward trusting in God's care and find God's hope and peace. And the blessing of the Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.